Imogen, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Investor. It's great to be back and it's obviously been an extraordinary 18 months for the industry. What are the greatest impacts that you've seen? Well, there's the obvious impacts on underlying companies. So when the pandemic hit, we did see quite substantial impacts on the revenue lines of companies. But what was actually quite interesting was that we didn't actually see that impact too much on the, on the EBITDA line. And also companies, it seems like, have been able to be managed appropriately by the managers and able to cope with those um, difficult times. And I think the, um, the net debt situation has also helped us because um, we're not like in the old um, scenario of the last global financial crisis where um, companies really did struggle. I think they went into this crisis in a much better position. So perhaps more resilience learning exactly. from the past. Exactly, exactly. I think managers have got that institutional memory of what went wrong and were, were better prepared going into it this time. So have you seen a change in approach to portfolio construction You know, as a result of the pandemic in those terms? To be honest, not really as a result of the pandemic. Um, we are seeing investors uh, more interested in thematic um, portfolio construction. So for example, venture or IT or healthcare. Um, but that's more, I think, as a result of more nuanced portfolio construction and people really evolving their approach rather than as a result of the pandemic itself. So perhaps companies are now looking for perhaps thematic sector expertise rather than perhaps geographical, which is what they look for in the past. Yeah, so we're definitely seeing people focus on more thematic investing, so especially in IT and, and healthcare. What's interesting though is that IT is not just a vertical, but it's also a horizontal. So we as consumers are experiencing technology so much more in our everyday lives that it really is impacting us uh, across the portfolio. And I think that's a trend that's here to stay. So you're talking about hot sector there. How yeah. do LPs engage in those sectors? And, and, and what are you seeing in terms of how that affects diversification in a portfolio? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I think we try to encourage investors not to focus too much on hot sectors because private markets is a long-term investment strategy. So we don't want them to be galloping off into the latest hot trend that they then need to rein back in on. What we do need to um, encourage them to do is invest with those best quality managers because they are going to be the best place people to know what the right areas are to invest in. Um, at different times in the market. So it's focusing on that quality that's important rather than just what's fashionable. And diversity within your teams is going to be more important than ever. Yeah, diversity is always hugely important. Um, I'm a big advocate of diversity, um, both within our investing community, but also the people that we're investing with. Do you, would you say there are certain sectors or strategies which you see LPs sort of in, increasing their exposure to? You talked about tech. Yeah, so IT and healthcare are the obvious ones, but what we're also seeing is that ESG and climate change are becoming really important to our investor base. And those companies and also GPs who can really demonstrate um, that they've got the credentials in that sector, I think are really going to be the winners over the next few years. As markets grow and clients look to invest you know, larger pools of, of capital, how do you ensure uh, appropriate portfolio construction in that environment? Yeah, that's a good question. When you've got larger pools of capital, you do need to make sure that you are sticking to your guns and making sure that you are looking at portfolio construction. It's really tempting to continue to invest in small deals, but if you do that, then you run the risk of investing over a really long time horizon or um, the investments just don't make a difference to the performance of the portfolio. So I think you do need to maintain those boundaries in portfolio construction. And what's really important is that you have access to a wide array of deal flows so that you can access the right investments for your investors and make sure that you're sticking to their investment strategy. You talked about this industry having had a surprising level of resilience during this very yeah. challenging time. What would you see are the greatest challenges now finally sort of going ahead and, and looking into the next 12 months, say? I think making sure that we um, continue to be disciplined and making sure that we continue to invest in the best opportunities in the market and not running off and doing anything that's um, out of 
whack with our strategies and making sure that I think people stick to their bread and butter of what they're good at um, rather than going off piste. And how does it feel to be able to come to something like this event and be able to talk to those colleagues yeah. in the flesh again? <laughs> yeah, it's really, um, it's a great experience. Um, slightly strange, if I'm honest, because you're so used to pe seeing people in, in 2D. Um, but I think it's a great opportunity to actually reconnect with people and see people that you haven't seen for a long time. So and it's, it's and great. connection and networking in this industry yeah. is so key. It's as so well, important. It? it really is. Imogen, thank you so much for joining My us. Pleasure. It's been great to thank talk you. to you. Pleasure.